my brother Damon. Damon, Damon, Damon. Listen, we folks, we've been on here talking for almost 10 minutes before the, before the chat, but as soon as I just said my brother Damon again, I got a little excited. As I was telling him, we're almost up to 50 interviews on this podcast, and this is one that I'm so excited about. And I don't know if any of you have had the experience of watching someone take information, apply it instantly, and grow and reap the benefits and rewards of it. Today's guest, Damon, is, is one of a kind, the best social media content I have ever seen, the most consistent I have ever seen. And my brother, listen, I'm just so excited. How are you doing today? Man, I'm doing absolutely phenomenal. How are you? Man, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. And I am blessed. And I'm going to be even more blessed after we hear some of this, these jewels that you're going to drop on us. But I want to know, you do a couple different things. If someone were to ask you, Damon, what do you do? What would you say to that? Uh, well, first and foremost, before I even answer that question, I got to actually throw it back to you. Um, I just want to acknowledge you. I want to thank you uh, for allowing me to come onto the platform, for just simply inviting me in. Uh, I was very, very honored when you asked me to do it. I know the other giants, literally, that you've had on this platform. Uh, my silent mentors like Les Brown and Myron Golden. So uh, for me to even be able to share on the platform uh, is a huge, huge honor, man. So I commend you in the work that you're doing in the world and uh, the lives that you're uh, continuing to impact as well. Hey, man, that's nice of you, but you're next up. And as I was just telling you, man, I had to get this before I was going to have to go through a team of VA or a, a team of like 25 people. So I, while I had direct access, I had to take advantage of it, man. But I appreciate those kind words, man. But let's yes, jump. The, the people need to hear this. The, the people yes, need to hear this. So yes, where, sir. when people say, Damon, what, what the heck do you do, man? How do you answer that? Man, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, more than anything, I would say I'm a clarity coach. I think the world has given me many different names. Uh, some people have said, well, he runs an insurance agency. Some people say he's the founder of an insurance agency. Some people say he's an athlete. Um, some people say he's the elevated income coach. Um, I think what most people will gain from me anytime they get a chance to converse is that I provide clarity. Um, and the reason why that's so important to me is because I was very lost and my future was very, very cloudy not too long ago. So instead of someone imparting their ideals or their ideas of what I should do into me, uh, one of my mentors really provided clarity. He showed me the path. He showed me how to use my beautiful mind. And uh, that's how we got to where we are now. And I, I just knew, man, once I finally had a chance to make it, I would spend the rest of my life doing the same exact thing. So I would say I'm a clarity coach. That's deep. You don't hear that too often. A lot of time you hear mindset coach and, and a law of attraction coach, clarity right. coach. That, that's deep, man. That's deep. And you've been launching a bunch of stuff recently that we're going to jump into in a little bit. But before we get into all of the success, man, you got to take me back. And I want to know where you started from and how did you get to what, where you are now being this clarity coach having an awesome brand and serving many clients and providing them with your favorite word, value. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, well, we'll start here, man. I was, I was born at a very young age. Just, just kidding, some, some of you guys will get that on the way home. Uh, I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, I won't go back to the long, long backstory, but you know, I, I would say this, for many people, you hear the accolades right now, um, but I just wanna make something very, very clear. I am exactly, like you. There's nothing painstakingly different about me. Uh, I wasn't given a different set of traits or abilities or talents or anything like that. Um, I actually graduated high school, barely graduated high school. I graduated with, graduated with a 1.7 GPA. I, I didn't even know they offered credit counseling service classes in high school. Uh, but sure enough, I, I was able to take those and that's what allowed me to graduate with a 1.7. Uh, but just like many of you, my mother told me the secrets of success. Uh, we didn't grow up with a lot of money, but she gave me the ideas of, I believe, what she had been sold on as well as to how I could create this future that uh, she had not had a chance to live yet. And so, you know, I got started out doing the right things um, in kindergarten. I graduated at the top of my class, um, went on, did, did decent again through school, barely graduated. Uh, I finally had a chance to get to college. I uh, ended up going to college. I'm following the game plan, she said. She said, Damon, I want you to go to school, do your best, eventually graduate, get a great job. And you guys have heard it time and time again. 
you work the 40, 40, 40 plan, right? 40 years, 40 hours a week to eventually retire and uh, hopefully survive off of 40% off of what may have not been making it before. And, and that's exactly what I did. Um, now, my path was a little bit different because for me, I always had a desire to do well. And, and what I mean by well is I can't say that I had a desire to be rich because I didn't even really know what that meant. Um, my parents divorced when I was two years young. My mother worked three different jobs to make less than $20,000 a year. Uh, during the day, she was a cafeteria worker for the local school system. In the evening, she would work a call center job doing customer service. And at night, she would do a janitorial job with a couple of her friends. And, and we always had more month than money. So for me, when I would go to Cleveland and visit my father, even though he lived with his mother, my grandmother, they lived in an area called Lakewood. Now, I want you to understand something. Where I lived at here in Columbus was poverty, right? There was a lot of death around us. There was a lot of drug use. I, I didn't live in the greatest conditions. But when I went to visit my father, I had a glimpse of what life could be like. They lived in an area called Lakewood. So I would see the gated communities. And I would see, I didn't even know that they could have the same backboards that they played in the NBA. But, but they had these things called guerrilla backboards. And I always had a desire to play basketball. But even back then, I know there were seeds that were planted that ended me up to where we are now. I, I tell people all the time, you can never connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backward. So the way I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness, being very, very disciplined in that religion, I never had a place, chance to play organized sports. But there were skills that I developed over time that led me to where I was when I kind of got into college. So as I, as I came out of school, I'm literally giving you guys 37 years of history uh, in a matter of a couple of minutes. So uh, we're gonna put this together, follow along, right? So, so I ended up getting out of college um, and, and, and I did not graduate. I actually graduated as a sophomore. Uh, that, that means it didn't come with a degree, all right? I, I just decided I was done. And, and guys, I want you to remember something. The voice that you're listening to, whether it's your voice, whether it's the voice of somebody else, it is leading you somewhere. And it's your discernment on listening to that person that will lead you, in my opinion, to one of two places, either to poverty or to prosperity. So it's very, very important that you're discerning and using wisdom about who that person is. And I truly feel that, you know, I'm not a super religious person. I am spiritual. But whenever God wants to change something in your life, he will send you a person. And so when I came out of college, guys, I, I was broke and broken. My dream was to play in the NBA. I had never played organized ball my entire life. No AAU, no high school, no middle school. Again, because of the religion that my mom was in. So even having a chance to play in college, I thought I would have an opportunity to play professionally. Well, that didn't happen. So uh, am I going too far? Is, is this good or should I take man, a break? You there? are good. My, I, I'm enjoying so, this, man. Awesome. All right, awesome and amazing. So I, I, I get out of college, guys, and I'm, I'm unlike many of the college students I was coming out of college with. A lot of the guys, they were able to go into different internships and kind of test the waters and kind of kick the tires on a bunch of different opportunities, uh, probably 21, 22, 23. Well, I was a little bit older. And because life had moved on me, I also had the responsibilities of a grown man. Meaning, at the time, I had a girlfriend who's now my wife, Tierra Dillard. I love you to life if you're watching this. I also had children. I had three children at the time that I came out of school. And guess what? I couldn't test things out. I had to make something happen. There, there was no, okay, let me see if this career opportunity is going to work. Well, I, I'll tell you this. I, I knew that I had a gift. I knew that I had a gift to communicate a long time ago. I knew that I had a gift of influence a long time ago. I knew that I liked the area of sales a long time ago. So what I thought was if I go to college and get a degree in financial economics and marketing, I could go anywhere in the world, teach people about finances, sell them on financial strategies. And if I'm selling rich people, I got to be rich. And so I remember going to all these different financial firms, man, and, and I went to, well, I won't name them on the, on the podcast, but I went to all these different financial firms and I was interviewing with them. And, and because I was always able to do this well, they all wanted to give me an opportunity. They're like, yes, come in. We're going to help you out. We're going to make you rich. Write this down. 
for whatever reason, I had a standard. I had the audacity, if you will, to not graduate college, but to come into a corporate environment and state what my standard was. And I believe in life, we don't get what we want, we get what our standards are. And for whatever reason, I said, you know what? I wanna make six figures. How long will it take for me to make six figures? And every single one of them said the same thing. They said, Damon, well, if you come in and you apply yourself and you know you build your book of business eventually from the residuals and renewals from your applicants and you know the book that you're, whatever, it take anywhere from three to four years. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't have that time. I said, you know what? I want to make six figures now. So remember what I told you about what happens when God wants to change something in your life. There was a mentor of mine, and I believe mentors are extremely important. We can talk about the difference between mentors and coaches in a second, but I believe mentors are extremely important because they give you an escape from your plat from your past. And they give you a glimpse into what your future can be. And, and the mentor said to me, he said, Damon, are you really passionate about being a financial advisor or do you want to make a lot of money? And I said, man, you know, honestly, <laughs> I, I don't care. I need to make a lot of money. I have responsibilities. I have people that I want to feed. I have people that I want to take care of. And I'm broke. Now, now listen, when I say broke, I mean, broke with multiple O's. Now, now, broke doesn't necessarily mean that I didn't have any money. No, that, that's poor. And when I say the word poor, poor means passing over opportunities repeatedly. No, I was broke, meaning I had a little money coming in, but I was driving a 92 Saturn that looked like this in the back. It like scrunched up because somebody had rear-ended us and we didn't have the money to get it fixed. The engine was leaking radiator fluid, transmission fluid, and oil. So every few miles, I would have to go to BP or the gas station and, and fill it up just to keep going. I remember being so broke that I had to go to different churches and communities in the area to get rent money. I remember calling my mom from time to time and saying, listen, mom, is there any way you can help me out with my asthma medication? I'm, I'm chronic asthmatic. And I didn't have any insurance. I didn't have the money for my medication. So I would say, hey, is there any way because my daughters have, I'm sorry, my sisters have all asthma is there any way they can ask the doctor for samples so I can get the medication so I don't have an asthma attack and end up in the hospital? Guys, when I say things were bad, they were bad. Listen, they were so bad. You guys ever heard of a guy named Pookie and Ray Ray? Don't, don't, don't try to be trying to act all holy and everything. Everybody knows a Pookie and a Ray Ray. You know, you know the Pookie and Ray Ray that you can get the free cable from? Yeah, yeah, we had free cable back then. You, you know the Pookie and Ray Ray that know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that can get you some free electric? Yeah, well, I did that as well. And all those decisions brought me to a point in my life where I was broken, broken. I had to move out of our apartment. It was a 700 square foot apartment, one bedroom with my wife and my daughter into her grandmother's home. Now, the craziest thing to me was at that age, everybody's telling me, Devin, that you got all the potential in the world. Man, you should be doing so much with your life. So when I was presented with an opportunity, the problem for me that I see with many entrepreneurs is my talent has always been able to get me somewhere that at that time, my character could not keep me. Come on now, don't get me started. Don't can can me I say started. that again? Say that one can more I time for everybody. My talent always was able to get me somewhere where my discipline could not keep me. Mm. So I could get in the room, but I couldn't stay in the room. I could get the job, but I can't. Can, can we talk about the pink elephant in the room when it comes to many entrepreneurs? I, I don't know about any of the guys or ladies on the line, but I believe the reason why we're interested in entrepreneurship is because of how talented we are. W what do I mean by that? When you recognize your talent, you also recognize a word called value. So it seems audacious and crazy to you that somebody could put a price on you because you know you're talented. But see, here's the problem with talent. When you're raised with talent, if you're anything like me, you're the type of person that could just show up and not have to study. You're the type of person that didn't have to spend an hour and hour and hours 
on the basketball court practicing skills, but you can show up at the game and score 30. But see, the problem in that is how you do anything is how you do everything. So when it comes to creating an entrepreneurial endeavor, like a business, your talent can get you in the door, but what keeps you in the door is discipline, consistency, integrity. And see, those are skill sets that do not require talent. What they require is resolve. And unless you resolve to use those abilities, you will continue aiming for life's home runs when in all actuality, in this business of entrepreneurship, it's all about base hits. So while you're swinging for the fences, the guys that are less talented are all about the bunts. They're going to do the little work. They're going to hustle to get the loose ball while you're over here uh, swinging away. And guys, for the longest time in my life, I never understood that. I never understood. Hey, Damon, what's really important is showing up on time. You're one of the best speakers in the room, Damon. But if you can't show up on time, no one cares. Hey, you're, you're one of the most charismatic guys ever. But, but the problem is, if you can't honor your word, that means, A, you're lacking integrity with yourself, and you're also going to lack it with other people. Damon, let me ask you a question. How, how did you come to the realization of this? Was, was it like, oh, see, Damon's is, Dame is making it a little colder in his house, right? He's, he's getting on fire right now. That's what I'm talking <laughs> about, man. <laughs> but how did you come to this realization that you had to start developing different character traits rather than continuing the way that you were? Was it that moment that you found yourself in that basement with your wife, your kids? How did you make that first realization and then start to make that transition? Yeah, that, that's it. That's an excellent question because a lot of people are reaching the points in their life where they're trying to figure out, okay, when do I need to change or when am I going to realize it's time to change? I believe that change happens instantaneous. So unlike popular opinion, most people think that you change over time. No. What happens is we take a long time to make a decision. The decision creates the change. So when people say, well, it takes a while to change. No, no, it takes you a while to make a decision. But once that decision is made, change instantly happens. Now, I believe that there's two different categories that lead up to change. You can identify which one is for you. For me, there was something called emotional impact. The other category is called space repetition. So what does that mean? Space repetition is where something happens ever so often in your life, where it keeps happening and it keeps happening and it keeps happening. And eventually, which 98% of the time, you never decide to change anyway, but eventually if change does happen, you decide enough is enough. I can't stay here anymore. I'm tired of seeing these bills come in the mail and they're piling up. I'm tired of having this argument with my wife about finances. I'm tired of feeling this way. Now, the scary thing about playing the space repetition game is 97% of the world has played that game and lost. And what they tend to do is say, well, this is just my life. You end up getting so comfortable with those things happening over time that you call it life that you call it, matter of fact, this was the will for my life. I was never meant to be rich. I was never, we'll talk about that on another one. Anyway, for me, it was emotional impact. Now, emotional impact is when something so jarring, so crazy, so impactful hits your life, hits you in the mouth that you are forced to make a change. I'll give you an example. The person who's not been paying to attention to their diet or their health for their entire life. And then finally, they have an episode where they pass out, they end up in the hospital, and the doctor tells them, unless you change your habits, we're going to have to cut off both your legs. Or the person that's been smoking their entire life, they get in the hospital and the doctor says, hey, unless you change your habits, we're going to have to perform open heart surgery 
and you have congestive heart failure, so you may die. Well, Devin, for me, it was in 2015, my back was against the wall. I was about to lose everything that I loved, literally. This was December of 2014. I'm two months past doing my rent. I'm three months past doing all of my utilities. The boxes are packed in my house. I'm about to lose the woman of my dreams. She's about to take my daughter with her. And the only person that I could blame in this situation was me. All the potential in the world, all the opportunity in the world, but it was me. So I don't want anybody on the line to think, oh, well, because you found the right opportunity, because it was the right timing for you, that's why you made money. No, 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 no. That, that, that had nothing to do with it. It's having the right opportunity at the right time, but more importantly, being the right person. So when I encountered that, I had a choice to make. That life event forced me to make a decision that has now put us in the position that we're in today. And Damon, let's, that's, that's deep, man. And, and Damon, that was six years ago. Six, yes. Only six years ago from yep. where you were. And I just want to draw the contrast really quickly. What, what, mm-hmm. By the way, what kind, of, what, kind of, what kind of Mercedes you got now? I've seen that ride, man. That's nice. Yeah, that's the uh, AMG 63, baby. Come on, man. Stop playing with us. So you found yourself in this position. You're back against the wall. And then what was the first step you took to get yourself out of the hole that you were in? I made a decision. Mm, okay. And what, and what exactly was that decision? Well, I think the decision anybody has to make is a decision about where they're going. Mm. And, and to me, that's the most important piece. Uh, there's no way to create something new when you're still thinking about the present or even the past. Um, do you mind if I share a definition real quick? That I Come think on, man. Right? That's what we're here for. So my, my, my mentor, and I would be remiss if I didn't share this real quick. The real transition happened in my life in 2013 when I met my mentor. And I was at a meeting, still broke as you know what. I walk up to a guy. I had no idea who he was. He looked like money. He smelled like money. He was charismatic. At the time, he's making 300 grand a month. And I'm making 300 pennies a month, right? Like I'm like making no money. And I walked up to him and I just simply said, man, what is it that you know that nobody else in your company knows? Because you're doing extremely well and a lot of people are not even making it. And what he said to me is what really, really created the shift. He said, Damon, no one else believes the way that I do. Mm. And I almost leaned in because it was so simplistic that I overlooked it. I was just like, for real, what's the, <laughs> what, what's the real secret here? And he said, no, no one believes the way that I do. I said, well, tell me everything that I need to know. Because it, for my whole life, I knew one thing about success. I, I knew that if I could figure out what's in a man's head, I can have exactly what's in his hand. Oh, it's very come simple, on, right? You can copy your way to success. It's very simple. And so I just asked him a simple question. I said, what do I need to do? He said, Damon, I want you to grab an audio. It's called The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale. And I want you to listen to it every day for three months. So what I did is I listened to it for every day for a year. He said, I want you to grab The Magic of Believing by Claude Bristol. And so I grabbed that and I listened to it every day for six months. He said, I want you to also grab a book. It's called What to Say When You Talk to Yourself by Dr. Shad Helmstetter. And so I grabbed that book. He said, Damon, I want you to listen to my audio. It's called Conceive, Believe, Achieve by David and Monitia. And so I listened to the first disc every day for about four years. And so what began to happen was I interrupted the thought pattern that I had that was giving me the results that I had. Watch this. Whoa, whoa. Say that. I say that. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, you can't move that fast. Say that. Say that last part one more time. Yes, sir. So, so I interrupted the thought pattern that was giving me the results that I had to create the results that I have. Ooh. And here, here's how I did that. I want to, I want to help you guys out. Do you, do you know what uh, Newton's law is? 
Newton's law of, oh man, I'm real bad. With all, oh, an object that stays in motion uh, continues to stay in motion until it's acted upon. Watch this. So an object in motion will continue to stay in that motion until impacted or interrupted by an outside force or object. Mm. David, why are you sharing this? This is in science class. Because when I learn that a thought is a thing, that means if I have a certain way of thinking until it is interrupted by an outside thought, I'm going to continue to stay in that thought pattern. Why is that important? Because the current way that you may have been thinking before listening or watching this podcast is now being interrupted. See, why I love the work that Devin is doing is because he's interrupting your thought pattern. We're giving you a new set of ideas. Okay, Damon, take it one step further. I want to give you guys a definition of future. Because he said, what was the first thing that you did? What was the first thing that you did to create a new result? Guys, I made $12,500 in 2014. I made 12500 I was moving furniture for a company called Two Men in a Truck. So every day I would wake up at 6 a.m. to be in the office at 7 a.m. And we would not get off until 7 at night. It sounds like I should have made more money, right? No, 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 no. See, we only got paid for the amount of time that we were moving furniture. So, so understand this. At, how old was I? At 29, at 29, everything I had experienced and had been thinking and had been saying to that point in my life, the words that have been spoken into my life, the words that I had been listening to, the environments that I had been putting myself in, the authority figures that were speaking into my life, the experiences I was, they had all led me to the point in my life where I was making $12,500 an hour. So watch this. I'm going to change your life. I don't care if you're making five figures and you want to get to six. You're making six and you want to get to seven. You're making seven and you want to get to eight. You're making eight and you want to get to nine. This is a universal law. The definition of future is the time or a period of time following the moment of speaking or writing. Time regarded as a whole. Okay, why, why am I sharing this? See, a lot of people say our words are powerful. And fundamentally, we all know the scripture, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Well, I want you to understand that the only creative power that you have are your words. So anything that's being created in the world right now on a very fundamental level had to first start with a thought. The podcast you're watching right now started with a thought. The device you're watching it on started with a thought. The microphone he's speaking through started with a thought. Everything is built three times. What do you mean by that, Damon? You build it in your mind. You build it on paper by writing it down. And then you build it by doing the physical work. I heard an, an author once say, that if you can write it with a pencil, you can build it with steel. So if that's the case, then the only way for me to create a new future is for me to speak or write it down. Does that make sense so far? Oh, that makes sense, man. Let me, let me ask a question. Let me ask a question right in there. Absolutely. So the thoughts, the thoughts that are coming into our head first and foremost, do you have to first shift your identity at all in order to begin thinking those new thoughts? Or is it really simple as I could just wake up tomorrow and be like, hey, I'm just going to think differently starting today and it's going to work? Yeah, yeah. That's a great question. Uh, let me give you something called the domino effect. So what is the domino effect? What we're talking about is changing a result whether your result are finances, whether your result are relationships, whether the result is your health life, 
whatever it is, what we're talking about right now is changing a result. The problem is when people go about changing a result, the first thing they do is look to change the result without necessarily understanding, well, how did I get to this result? It would be the same as you going to an apple tree and saying, okay, I'm gonna prune these leaves and hopefully get oranges from this apple tree. Well, no, you, you would be crazy. First, we would have to start with the root. Okay, Damon, well, what would be the root of my results? Write this down. Your beliefs are creating your thoughts. Your thoughts are creating your feelings. Your feelings are creating your actions and your actions are creating your result. I'm gonna say that again. Your beliefs, my beliefs, my beliefs, I can't say that word enough. My beliefs are creating my thoughts. My thoughts are creating my feelings. My feelings are creating my actions and my actions are changing the result. Now, if I'm making $12,500 an hour, there's no way for me to change my thoughts unless I first change what? Change you, change those beliefs that you can earn I more than- Beliefs. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what everybody is asking. Well, Damon, how do I change my beliefs? Yes. First, you got to understand where beliefs come from. Are you ready? Every belief that you have has come from four different sources. From the moment you were born, there's four distinct sources that have formed and shaped your beliefs. Write these down. The number one was your environment. Well, Damon, what do you mean? How did my environment create my belief? Well, let, let me ask you a question, Devin. Religious, religiously speaking, if I was raised, let's just say in the South, maybe Alabama, for example, what religion would you probably guess I would be? You're gonna be a Christian, probably a Baptist or something of the sorts. Southern Baptist, right? On fire for the Lord. Oh yeah. Right? Okay, if I was raised in Great Britain, what do you think I would be? I don't know. I'm going to say Catholic. I'm not sure, right? I'm on. A, there we go. Come on now. <laughs> if I was raised in 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 the Middle East, right? What do you Pro think I would probably going to be Muslim? Now he was able to spit that off the top of his head. Why? Because those environments typically breed those thought patterns. So your environment, listen, people will die for their religion, for their religion. That's a belief. The second source are the authority figures in your life. So if you had teachers, parents, authority figures of any kind that have been saying certain things to you. See, I, I, I believe that you and I have the same mother. Well, Damon, what you talking about? Well, I, I know your mom. What are you talking about, Dan? Well, let me ask you this. If you've ever experienced financial issues, I bet your mom was selling you, you the same thing my mom was selling me. She, she was telling me things like, well, well, Damon, on your way to the top, make sure you play it. You got to play it safe. She, she was probably saying things like, uh, all rich people are going to. They're going, they're going to hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> she was probably saying things like, well, well Damon, you, you, you know money doesn't grow on trees. Oh, come on. She, she was probably saying things like, um, get, be careful for, watch out for those get rich quick. Those schemes, scams. And, and you know what? I had a belief about money because of what that authority figure was yeah. saying. To me. Number three, repetitious information. What is repetitious information? That could have been what you've been hearing from your associates. That could be what I'm watching on TV. See, so many people are confused right now about wealth because of what they've seen growing up. If you didn't grow up in a household where they were constantly talking about ideas and imagination and creating wealth, but they were talking about working hard for your money or grinding, then that's probably what you think it takes to create wealth. The last one is your experiences. Devin, I have a question for you, man. If, if I was to sit you in front of a chair and I said, listen, man, this chair is state of the art. It will hold the weight 
of a 4,000 pound elephant. Mm. And then I say, I want you to sit down. You sit on the chair and the chair buckles under your weight. What will you now believe about the chair? First off, not state of the art. It's a piece of crap. Definitely can't hold the weight of an elephant. Exactly. Your belief is now comprised based on what you experienced. Mm. So those four factors have impacted my belief system. So guess what I said, Devin? I said, okay, um, I'm going to use those same four factors to create a new belief system. That's so here's the, first, here's the first thing I did. I changed my environment. Write this down. What is your environment made of? Words, images, and emotions. Words. You speak to yourself 80% of the time. 80% of the day, you are having conversation. And when you just said, no, I'm not. See, you're talking to yourself now. You're talking to yourself all the time. So this is what I said. Okay, if I've allowed other people to convince me of the lifestyle I currently enjoy, let me convince myself of something different. Because when I look at the word believe, there, there's a particular word inside of there that says lie, L-I-E. And I believe Shakespeare said it best when he said, to think you can or think you can't, you're both actually right. So what I decided to do when I learned this from the magic of believing is it said you can do something called the mirror technique. Because the truth of the matter is the world is going to perceive and accept you the way you see yourself. So now based on the way that I speak to myself, the world will see me. Based on the way I see myself, the world will see me. So if I'm selling a program, if I'm selling an idea, if I'm in sales in general, guess what? If I see myself as somebody that makes $12,500 a year, then the only way for me to make $12,000 a day is to see myself as a millionaire. So this is what I said, write this down. I came up with a new set of beliefs. Damon, what are you talking about? Let's see if I got it here. Oh, matter of fact, I do. Watch this. Guys, I've had this journal since 2016. It's, it's so old that it needs to be rebound. Yeah, that thing old, old. It's old, old right? And, and what I did is I wrote down a set of beliefs. And I wrote down these beliefs based on what I wanted. Write that down. I had to answer the question, Damon, what do you want? And so I wrote down 167 desires. And I wrote down crazy things, Devin. I wrote down I have my own helicopter. I wrote down I have seven different properties, and all of them are multi-million dollar properties. I wrote down that I'm 195 at a 12% body fat. I wrote down that uh, I, I positively impacted the lives of a billion people. I wrote down all these different lies. And then what I asked myself is I said, in order for me to become that, Damon, what do I not currently believe about myself that I would need to believe in order for this new life to become a reality to me. Damon, that's, that's, that's deep though, because you know how most people, and I was just, I was just teaching this. Some of my clients the other day, man, <laughs> everybody starts with what we want to have. Then we focus on what we got to do, but we don't focus on who we got to be. And this is what I told him. And this is why I'm loving everything you're, you're saying right now. I'm silently saying in my head, amen, brother, amen. <laughs> but it's, it's one of the characteristics, qualities, and beliefs, like you were just saying, the characteristics, qualities, and beliefs that I have to begin to develop that will enable me to do the things that I have to do that will eventually enable me to have the things that I want to have. And, and what I really love about it all is, it's so funny, man. Everybody, this is why I, this is how you know that Damon knows his stuff. I just had Brian Tracy on a couple, a couple days, I don't know, five at the time of this recording, five episodes ago. And what he said that you said was repetitious self talk, talking to yourself. How you talk to yourself is how your reality will be. And then the other thing is, and this goes to what you were saying about the being part and who do I have to become is, well, all you got to do is. Look at those that are already there and think about what are the qualities, characteristics, and beliefs that they currently have. And then look at yourself and say, well, which one of those don't I have? And can I begin developing so I can get to where they are? This is, this is deep stuff, man. This, I don't know if the people were ready for this today, Damon. 
It's heavy. It's heavy. You, you just said it, man. A lot of people think it's okay. When I do the thing, then I'll have the thing and I'll be the person. But really you- it's the other way. It's be, do, have. Mm-hmm. You're only going to act in accordance to how you see yourself. <laughs> so, so I had to come up with a new set of beliefs. And, and when I did, what I created was something called an audio. I've never played this for anybody before, but I'm going to play it on this podcast. Play it for me. I have a 10 minute audio where I'm speaking to myself. I believe in 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 myself. Now you're probably asking like, here's the other things I say. It's a, it's a nine minute audio, 10 minute audio. I believe in myself. I am happy. I am healthy. I am humble. I am wealthy. I am strong. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. Everything that I touch turns to gold. Everything that I touch turns to gold. I am a force for good. I am a force for God. I am the lender and not the borrower. I take action on my goals and my dreams now. I do not hesitate. I always step up. Money comes to me easily and effortlessly. Sharp, ambitious people are always contacting me to be a part of my business. I am now, listen, I came up with affirmations for everything and I listened to them over and over. And what began to happen is I began to see myself differently. Mm -hmm. And you just said something that, that was powerful. You said, if I see someone creating the result I want to create, understand something, guys, there's nothing wrong with you. Can I say that again? You've actually proven that you are perfect. Damon, what are you talking about? For the lifestyle you lead right now, you've proven you're perfect for it. How do you know? Because that's the lifestyle you lead. But watch this. Have you ever walked into some, matter of fact, have you ever crossed paths with somebody and you said to yourself, they give me the wrong vibe? As in vibration. (laughs) People don't get that part. (laughs) So watch this. If I see someone living at a completely different level, what that means to me is if I understand the law of attraction, the law of attraction states like attracts like, but really it's the law of vibration. That's the senior law. And what that's saying is like vibrating things will attract like, but that's how I got on this podcast because we're, we're cut from the same cloth. So if I see someone living at a level that I esteem to live on, all I have to do is figure out how are they vibrating? Mm -hmm. What frequency are they on? Because see, a Bugatti is at a certain frequency that a Honda may not be on. A Rolls Royce is at a a certain frequency that other cars. So if I can vibrate as the person that sees themselves worthy of whatever it is, one of the first things I said was I believe in myself. So I have a question for you. If you believed that you could not fail at anything that you do, what would you do? This is getting good, man. This is getting good. Damon, I, I, this is, I ask people almost the same question. If time, energy, money, and resources were not an issue and you had all that you could ever imagine, what would you do? Come what on, man. And, and that's, this is what I want to, this is, this is filling my heart, Damon, because this is like, I feel like two brothers on here just, just chatting <laughs> about personal development and nothing yeah. makes me happier in the world. And I want to throw in one other thing is, sure. we talked about being in that vibration he talked about like Rolls Royce, Bugatti. Let's talk about expensive things. A lot of people may say, man, how do I get that? I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw, I'm going to let you talk about that a little bit. How do I get in a vibration of a, a Rolls Royce or a Lambo or a Ferrari when I'm only making 20, you know, 30, 40,000 a year? No way I could afford. How do I get in that vibration? Yeah. Well, again, your vibration is made up, first of all, of your spirit. Um, yet that spirit is released by the words of your mouth. And and for me, once again, I know it's going to sound repetitious, but it's your belief. See, based on the words that just came out of your mouth, I know some, I know you would never say that, but I know a lot of other people say that there's one thing that I always tell my, uh, my clients to do, or 
my students and I say, listen, I want you to go dream build. And they're like, what? What, what is dream building? In order to get there, first you must go there. Can I say that again? In order for you to get there, you must go there. If you look at the word saw, S-A-W, if you were to reverse that word, the word is was. See, if I'm going to see something in my future, I literally have to go there first. <laughs> All right, let, let, let me back up. Let me, let, let me back up. I don't want to confuse anybody, right? Okay, Damon, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I'm, I'm, I don't have the money for that. Watch this. I've been walking into the Mercedes dealership for so long, and not one time did they think I did not have the money. Before I made my first six figures, I would walk into the Mercedes dealership, but watch this. People will feel you before they ever hear you. Can I say that again? They will feel you before they ever hear you. Can you tell if somebody's depressed? Why? Because of what they see, because of what they feel. So when you walk into a dealership, if you already feel that you do not have the money, then you're probably not going to visit the dealership. More importantly, you're never going to attract the circumstances that would allow. Now, I want to share this. When you plant a seed, S-E-E-D, when you plant a seed, what do you have an expectation of? I think it's going to grow. Do you think it's going to grow or is that your expectation? That's my expectation, man. I expect yeah. that this is going to grow. And, and I have a question for you. If, if that is your expectation that it will grow, what kind of maintenance would you make on that seed? Man, I'll do everything that I need to do in order to make sure that that thing grows. 100%. You're going to water the ground. Yeah. You're going to the ground. You're going to do whatever. Understand something. Every time a word comes from your mouth, you are planting a seed. Mm. Now, the problem is what most people do with the words of their mouth is they'll say, I am a millionaire. They'll say, I am successful. They'll say, they'll plant all these success seeds, but then they'll ask, well, how is it going to happen? And then they start to judge the progress of that seed based on what they can physically see. But Devin, I think there's something that's really unique and parallel to when you plant a seed in the ground. See, when you plant a seed in the ground, Dirt is not transparent. There's, dirt is not in, invisible. It's dark. So the beauty behind it is when we're planting that seed and we're watering that ground, we're expecting something. But the truth of the matter is we can't see what's happening underneath the ground. But what you're doing when you say things like, I don't know if I'll ever be able to afford that Rolls Royce. You know what? This ain't working. Man, I'm so sick and tired of this. Man, if, if it's not one thing, it's another. It's almost as if you went to that seed and dug it up to make sure that what you planted were success seeds. Mm. And the minute you pull it out of the ground, what happens to the progress? Stops, man. It's dead. And then we wonder why our life seems to be very cyclical. And then we wonder why, man, I thought 2021 was going to be my year, but <laughs> let's go again. That's so true, man. You know man, what I'm saying? I, I, you said two things, Damon. That's why I let you answer that. When I, when, when I said, how do we get enough? Because you literally said what I was going to say, and I knew you were going to say what I was going to say. But sure. ladies and gentlemen, Damon, did you ever visit the Mercedes dealership before you had the S63 AMG? All the time. All, and why, why was that? Because I need to get in that vibration. Come on. See, folks, you, you have to begin to get, you have to begin to, to understand what it's like to be there first. It, it was, it was uh, Nietzsche. Uh, no, 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 no. Wait, wait. See, I'm, I'm, I, lo I love my quotes, man. It, I think it was Nietzsche, German, German philosopher, who said that before you can do something, you must first be something. Right, and even it re relates to a car, or whatever. You have to begin to get familiar with what it feels like in order. And you talked about the seed, man. What's powerful about that for me is 
I think personally, one of the ways in which we can make sure that that seed is those roots are firm, those roots are good to go is yes. Like you were saying, people will think I'm a millionaire, I'm, but then circumstances happen. I'm a millionaire is begin to feel what it's going to feel like when you are a millionaire. Yeah. Like it, it, talk to me. My yeah. bad. My bad. No, I, I just wanted to add this. I, I spoke to a mentor of mine. So my mentor's mentor, I remember him saying something that really, really stuck with me when it comes to believing. Because the words of your mouth are evidence of what you're believing for. Yeah. He said, everybody believes. Everybody believes. Now, the question is, what are you believing for? And when you're looking to create a new belief, like you just said, I am a millionaire. The question is, how disciplined are you with that belief? Because watch this. I just said that the definition of future is the time or period of time following the moment of speaking or writing. So you're literally deciding your future the minute you speak. Think, think about this. I have to be disciplined now with the words of my mouth. Because if I say I am a millionaire, but based on circumstance, based on my present situation, it doesn't look like I'm a millionaire. It doesn't matter because I've already planted the seed of millionaire. So that means when things don't look right, when the business is going backwards, when your spouse is acting like they don't have any common sense, when everything seems to be going crazy, what I've learned and what brought us to the point where I was at $12,500 in income in 2014, and now we have days that we do much more than that was only because when things didn't look the way I wanted to, I never stopped repeating my confession. I heard a pastor say it before. He said, in your day of contradiction, do not change your confession. Mm, that's deep, man. Listen, who, who, is, who is your mentor's mentor? Can't tell the secrets? I wrote this. Uh, well, he, he's not his mentor anymore. But uh, if everybody knows who David Immonitia is, um, you, you'll know who his mentor is. I think I just started following him because of you, man. Man, let me yeah, tell you, yeah. that, that dude dresses sharp. Listen. He gives you a run for your money. Sharp as a tack. You, you see where I get it from? You see where I get it from, man? Environment. That's, that's, modeling. That's man, listen, I'm going to need a part two from you. Just saying. That's, Let's do that, it. That's first things first. But I want to end this. I want to hear real quick, where, where is the business at right now in terms of what are some stuff that you're working on? What's, it, what's some goals maybe that you have? What's the future of Damon look like? Yeah, yeah, the future is bright, man. I know exactly what 40 is going to look like. I know exactly what 50 is going to look like. Uh, it's going to be absolutely amazing. I feel like I'm aging backwards right now, brother. Uh, but I'm excited, man. My life's purpose is very, very simple. Uh, I want to spend the rest of my life inspiring others. Uh, I believe that I've, I've been sent here, that my purpose is to positively impact the lives of a billion people. And uh, I, I believe the bane to my existence, to be honest, is people lacking in confidence. Um, and I say that because at one point or another, I was a very, very insecure person. Uh, I, I suffered from depression before. I was very, very lost. I did not know what, what was up, down, left, right. Didn't know what my future was going to look like. So for me, I know that we're all made of greatness because we come from the greatest source. The difference is I believe that people just don't understand what they've been equipped with. And all I wanna do is make sure that they understand it and how simple it is to apply it. So, you know, we've created an academy, it's called the Elevated Income Academy. Um, and right now the goal with that is very, very simple. We wanna have 10,000 members at the end of 2022 in the academy. I don't care what their background is. I don't care what your field is. I'm not selling a specific entity, a specific product, a specific company. I'm selling you on you. And we're not talking about fluff. We're not talking about, oh, just, just think and attract it. No, no, we're talking about strategies that are working for a lot of people. And I believe my gift is in articulating these ideas. So um, that's what we're working on right now, man. I'm excited about that. Uh, we still have the insurance agency as well. That thing's going. Uh, but I'm excited just about the lives that we're going to impact and and the people that we can help. 
Damn it, if I, if I want to join it, somebody listens, damn, this dude, good, man. It, are the doors yeah. still open to join this Elevated Income Academy, or what's it looking like at the moment? Yeah, yeah, so the academy is open. My one-on-one coaching is closing very, very soon. Um, I really don't have the time capacity to take on a lot of clients with that right now, but uh, if you want more information on that, you can either A, follow me on Instagram. It is Damon P. Dillard. I'm, I'm sure he'll put it in the show notes. Yep. Uh, or, of course, Facebook, Damon Dillard. I don't have any cool names or anything like that. Um, or you can go to online, go, G-O, dot Damon P. Uh, feel free to navigate the site. we got some programs on there. Uh, you can also sign up for a clarity session where you can get a one-on-one call with me and see if you qualify for uh, one-on-one training. That's dope, man. That's dope. I, I got so many more questions, but we don't got the time. For, we don't got the time for that right now, man. So I'm gonna hold you to that second yeah. session. But I want to ask yeah. you one last question, and sure. that is, when you look at your life and this this dream that you're building, you're living your dream day by day. Is when when you're there and your kids are in their 40s, 30s, you're watching your daughter walk, your multiple daughter walk down with their husband. You know, you're crying, and, and you look back on all of this, the life that you've built. What do you hope that your legacy? will be and the contribution that you made for others in the world. Yeah, just that, man. I want people to literally look at my life's example and say, because he did it, I can do it too. Mm. And so that, that literally controls my entire day. Um, everything that I put out on Instagram, everything that I share in my stories, uh, everything that I do on a day-to-day basis is predicated on that vision. Um, They said, without a vision, people perish. Well, the original intent of that word perish didn't mean to die. It meant to lack discipline, um, to lack restraint. So a lot of people are lost in their lives. And I was lost for a long time because I just didn't have a vision. I didn't know what to be disciplined on or what to do. So when people look at my life, when I'm out of here, I want people to say, man, listen, my encounter, I think my my Angelo said it best. She said, people don't remember what you said. They remember how you made them feel. I want people's encounter with me to give them hope, to give them belief. I once asked my mentor on the show when he was on back episode 50. I said, sir, what is what do you want your legacy to be? He said, real simple. I think it's like five words, six words. Aspire. I want to aspire to inspire until I expire. Straight up, straight down. And I was, like, I was like, damn, man, that, that's good. But that's good. listen, Damon, man, we didn't even get to touch on the whole social media game marketing. We, we didn't even get yeah. to touch on none of that. Why, though? Because you got to focus on the mindset first. Yeah. Mm. So, Damon, we're going to have a part two, man. I appreciate you. You are a brother from another mother. I live in, well, I work in Columbus, Georgia. You're in Columbus, okay. Ohio. Come on, man. See, it's, 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 it's the connection. Listen. D, we will be back together. I appreciate you so much. I had such a good time with you here today. 100%. Thank you, man.